The news, if you like, for us is that that wasn't news. It was just yet another case whereby the police, unless there's an absolute body stone cold dead on the ground, don't want to know about it. In response to the Justice for Nicky campaign, I saw so many comments from local people in Batley and Dewsbury saying that's what it's like up here, this happens all the time. Constantly people telling me they're religiously and racially targeted by, by members of the Muslim community. So that's brought us back to Batley. I'm in Batley today. I'm going to meet a leading journalist here. The man who started his journalism career 40 years ago in this town, he's run the local newspaper for 25 to 30 years. And we're going to hear from him so he can tell us what it's like here. Was this a one-off? Is this regular? What's it like? Is it, are other communities policed equally? I started as a journalist here 40 years ago and I was the editor-in-chief of the newspaper group that covers all of this area, North Kirklees, from 1993. I set up my own business, my own newspaper in 2002, um, in large part because I was frustrated at what was happening and also the fact that the mainstream media was just pretending this wasn't going on. We started our newspaper 15 years ago now with a campaign on, on the drug problem and, and the fact that I have got lots and lots of friends who have lost children and grandchildren to heroin overdoses and nobody, and it would anywhere else in any other city, in any other area of criminality, this would be called an epidemic. And I was having a, you know, and, and yet I was, felt like I was in a bubble where no one was willing to admit. To, to, to admit what the problem was because of which community the problem was rooted in. We have one of the biggest heroin problems in the UK. That, to me, I don't care about the religion, I don't care about the colour, the creed. I care about the crime and I care about the victims and I care about the fact that we're creating bigger and bigger, more divisive problems in our communities by failing to address them. Because that is why you've got, you know, two communities completely at odds with each other. We have a, 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 a climate and a culture now whereby people, particularly in the, you know, the, the, the established white community, the old fashioned views in the community, have a sense that there's one set of rules for one community, there's one set of rules for the other. You kids, know. Love, kids loves for the Muslim community. I'm yeah, and it, and it isn't just crime as well, it's everything. I mean, uh, well, we're, we've had electoral fraud. We've had electoral fraud in this town for, for decades now, whereby, um, you know, intimidation at the, at, the, at the polling booth, attacks on candidates, people going around house to house, uh, making people uh, fill in, you know, make Muslims, well, you, you, Muslims, making, all these things. Muslims making Muslims fill in a, a, a ballot form. Um, we've exposed it. Local, we have had one or two really, really, really strong, in, you know, individual Muslim councillors and community representatives from this area who stood up against it and said, listen, you know, we're making a problem for ourselves here by not addressing these problems. So, you know, we get onto a story, we run it, the police turn up, they send a Muslim community liaison officer to talk to the victim. He leaves the incriminating evidence with her and says, do you want to have a think about this for a few days? See, this is what's happening. And so then she tears up the ballot. Paper, which the cat, the it was actually the the, the daughter, so the, the, the daughter. Involved, they send a Muslim police officer to the case to talk her out of to talk her out. making the complaint. This, for a long, long time, was the the police station. You can still see it, it still is it, it, to all intents and purposes. Um, but all but all you've got here now is an administrative presence. Basically, the entire police command structure now is ten miles up the valley at Huddersfield which has a completely different demographic. It's got all its own different crime issues, if you like, it's different community issues. And, you know, I've, I've quite often said that the, whoever is commanding the police in this division now probably couldn't find Dewsbury and Batley Town Hall if you gave them a sat-nav. There was a Sunday afternoon and um, a police car came upon, upon a, a public disorder in Ravensthorpe. That's a neighbourhood in Dewsbury. And this was Muslims fighting Muslims. They stopped, they made a couple of arrests. They got the guy in the back of the car Suddenly, a mob depends on the, uh, descends on the police car. Yep. They, whatever their call sign is for officer needs assistance, there was one traffic patrol car in this division, which is 180,000 people. He attends, they get the mob, they break it up, they arrest this guy, take him to Dewsbury Police Station. The next thing you know, the entire, the entire arterial route between Huddersfield and Wakefield is shut down with a mob of hundreds who are, stoning, who are stoning cars and demanding the release of their friend, yeah? All of a sudden, the police don't know what to do. They don't know there's a sticker lift. There's hardly enough of them, you know, they've got a call to HQ in Wakefield to get some assistance, some backup. 
And basically, you then have a couple of community figures from the Muslim community come out and agree to negotiate and arbitrate and talk to um, the gang, the gang and, 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 and talk it all down. They, they disperse, you know, the guys release without charge. Until next time. Do you know what you've just what you've just spoke about there is I spoke about in Birmingham where I saw them someone bricked a police officer then all the Muslims come with the imam to the to the police station and said let him go now and we read online on one of the left wing blogs that they let him go when I went for my next meeting with Birmingham police I asked the police officer did this happen and he said yes and I said so who controls who can if that happened there yeah. and that's happened multiple times in this area it's happening across our country who controls the, the streets is it the police or is it the no 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 it, it isn't the streets it isn't the police anymore and and, and I mean. I've, 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 I mentioned just before we came out um, a situation last year where there were, I mean, th there, is, there, is, there is gangland crime going on around here on a daily basis and, and it self-polices. So we had a, a, a case where houses were getting broken into, Muslim houses, where people had gold and, and a lot of cash on the premises, old ladies were getting knocked over, someone was coming in robbing them. Obviously an inside job from within the community, but the community set about sorting it out itself. Now, uh, a friend of mine, his brother was up a roof doing a job on a, in, in, in a, a Muslim part of town and suddenly there's a mob surrounding the house wanting him down because they think he's involved in these robberies. He wasn't. Uh, a prominent local uh, Muslim businessman vouched for him, the, the crowd backed off. He then gets a phone call saying, we want you to come along to a community resolution hearing. Uh, and if you know what's good for you, you're going to come. Now, that might sound like a threat, but actually was said, no, you, you've been aggrieved against. It's in your interest if you want to keep working in our community for you to turn up. So he did do, middle of the, middle of the Muslim community in Savile Town. And basically, it's a Sharia court. So a non, and he's a non-Muslim? He's, he's a white guy. He's, he's been he's summoned a, he's to a, a he's, he's a tradesman, he's a roofer. <laughs> and he's been summoned and, to a Sharia court summoned, in this uh, area. But, and, and he's kind of like, you know, a bit nervous about all of this, because as you would be. But when he goes in, there's a panel sitting there and the hearing takes place and basically he's invited. Will he, would he accept the apology of the people who made the accusation against him? And so obviously it's in his interest to say yes, you know, get out of there without any more bother. The interesting thing is there's two police officers sat observing. The two police sat observing the Sharia court trying a non-Muslim. Well, they would say it wasn't. Trying. They would say it was. A, they would say it wasn't a Sharia court. Well, that's, they, they, but, but that's what he says. To all intents and purposes, it was. Being, being based here for thirty years, seeing everything that's gone on the stories, what would you say the future is? If, what would you say the future is for this area? Well, I wrote. How do you see it going? <laughs> I wrote a book in two thousand and eleven called the Islamic Republic of Dewsbury. Um and I haven't seen much to change my mind about what's going to happen. Um, with this community, you've only got to be extensively looking at it's, it, what's it, happened, it, it, how it, it's you know, happened. It might sound like a little bit of a provocative title for the book, but actually, it's it more of a social history. It's actually explaining, you know, where the town was, what the town I grew up with my Irish Catholic background, what we were as immigrants, with the Polish immigrants that came after the war. And, and, and then the, the new wave of immigrants of the 50s and 60s and, and how that has changed, you know, the, everything about the town beyond all recognition. Um, some people will tell you that's cultural enrichment. I, I can't say that I see or feel that, you know, but I'm still here and uh, still just trying to do a job as a newspaper man and, 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 and you know, and hold, um, and hold a mirror to the people that are making a lot of decisions that affect a lot of other people and not themselves. Danny, one thing I'd like to ask about is local politician. This, yep. is, this is the area Joe Cox was murdered in. Indeed it is, yeah. Her office was just 100 yards from us. So the man, the man who murdered her? Thomas Mayer. Thomas Mayer. Because um, I, I don't even think, I hear he shouted Britain first or put Britain first. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Friends of mine were witnesses and saw it happen and, and I, I, I heard about the actual attack on Joe within 20 minutes of it. Um, he was, Tommy Mayer was known to nobody around here. He was a loner, an absolute one-off. He, he, he didn't have any political affiliations that we know about. Um, it was just a sad, tragic thing. And I think the ground sort of feeling here was, you know, why don't you pick on somebody your own size, mate? Yeah, just a, yeah. an, a harmless, a harmless, you know, well-meaning young lass like Joe. That, you know, it, it was just, it was an absolute tragedy. And in all of my years in journalism, I've never known anything quite like that day and that week in this town.
And so t who's t Tracy Braben's took over from her? Tracy Braben, the, the famous soap actress, Cor Tracy. Street, yeah, Corey, I think she's so done a few as Tracy. What would you say to what would you say then if people said if, if all these problems are in this area, which we know about, and the local politician was yeah. Joe Cox, yeah. now it's Tracy Braben, yeah. are they ignoring these issues? Um, they're part of the problem, I'm afraid to say. Yeah. Uh, you know, as well meaning as they may well be as, as politicians, you don't get elected into you don't get elected into office in Deersman Batley unless you nurture a particular part of the voting community. And that voting community <laughs> is, the, is the biggest part of it, is the Muslim vote. Uh, vote. And of course, you know, this is not news again. The mosques tell people who they're voting for. So whether you're Joe, and Joe was very active at it, Joe played the, Joe Muslim played the Muslim card, you know. She went into the mosques, she, you know, she wore the headscarf. When Tracy was uh, um, canvassing last year, she was out and about just Right behind us in, in Mount Pleasant, canvassing in a headscarf on a, on a street. She now, she canvassed out in the street. She canvassed out in the street. The local Labour politician who's not a husband, she's wearing a headscarf. She's not in a mosque. She's showing them I'm for you. She's showing them I'm for you. I, I, I'd like to think that this time for Tracy has only been in office just over a year. I'd like to think this time for her to, to see the light and say, you've got to actually bring some cohesion to this community, Tracy, and represent both communities not separately but when she's going on their radio station talking about the issues in Palestine when she's talking about global issues <laughs> that don't affect the price of bread on the on the high street and, in Batley and, and young English girls and, are being and, their heads and, caved and, in you know, and, week and, in week and regularly so so you know it it's, angers me. It, it, it angers a lot of people and and and, and, and I get the real politic of it non-Muslim people in this area feel sold out for these issues that's it's one of the it is one of the one of the contributing factors and I as I said, Tracy's new to the job, you'd like to think that she could grow into it and understand that she's becoming, or risks becoming, part of the cultural problem and not the solution. I think it's just this political sensitivity. It's, oh God, you know, we can do without this. We can do without the aggravation. We don't want the BBC or ITV, you know, cameras turning up and, and, and actually looking too closely at how rubbish a job we're doing. And, and, the, and it's anything for a quiet life. And, 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 and if we pretend hard and hard and hard enough, that there isn't a problem here, then maybe, you know, I can sit out my time and get my promotion or I'll move on to the next thing and let it be someone else's problem. I think that is as much to do with uh, uh, as anything else. This has become a lot bigger now than just justice for Nikki. We've now found out that these problems are embedded here and this is a common theme where the police just don't deal with the Muslim criminals. They're allowed to get away with whatever they want in this community. People have continually been beaten up and attacked and the police are not doing anything. So what I'm asking you to do is continue signing that petition. I'm going to spend more days up here next week interviewing more members of the public to find out how bad and how embedded this problem is in Dewsbury and in Batley. If you can sign the petition at justicefornicky.com and give me more ammunition so when I do find Mohammed Ralph, who's the Muslim inspector for this area, the police aren't doing anything, then I have a bigger array of signatures to give him. I think at the minute we're over 20,000. We went up to 50,000, so please keep signing, keep sharing, share these videos.